Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Knot and our reflection videos that we are posting for this Lenten season. We hope that you had a good week, and we are looking at when Jesus meets a woman at the well, a Samaritan woman at the well, and we're reading from John 4, um, verses 5 to 12. So let's get started. Was burnt out. There's a place at the point that's past turning around. So the passage of scripture that we're reading today, like I said, comes from John chapter 4, verses 5 to 42. And if you're familiar with this story, you will know that it is when Jesus is asking a Samaritan woman for a drink at the well. Um, he interacts with this Samaritan woman and asks her for a drink and if, he, if she would give him a drink. And there's a few things that I want to point out about this story. First, it says that Jesus had to go through Samaria to get to Jerusalem. If we read scripture, it says that Jesus wanted or had to go through this town called Samaria in order to get where he was going. And if you know the history between Samaritans and Jews, it's not a pleasant one. These were two groups of people who really did not get along. There was wars, there was vengeance, um, and there was rejection if you were a Samaritan person going into a Jewish land. So this was a really, really tricky situation for, for Jesus to ask his disciples and the people traveling with him to go through Samaria, a really dangerous place for Jews as they were walking through their land to get to Jerusalem. But it says that Jesus had to do this. Jesus really didn't have to go through Samaria to get to Jerusalem. He could have taken a different route and avoided this uncertainty and crossing cultural boundaries and even possible death. Jews and Samaritans, they just did not get along. But it says that Jesus had to do this. So it shows us that Jesus chose to meet this woman at the well before she even knew it. Another thing I wanted to highlight is that the woman was walking to the well in the middle of the day. This might seem not that odd to us or not like a big deal, but there are some things that are very interesting about this scenario. So the woman at this time would have traveled together in the morning to go retrieve their water from the well. It would have been safe traveling together in the morning and it wouldn't have been as hot as if compared to traveling in the afternoon sun. So this shows us that the woman that Jesus encounters was traveling alone and then also in the afternoon without any women or without anyone else traveling with her. So it tells us that this woman was excluded from the village. She was um, not welcomed by the people who lived there. She wasn't allowed to go with the other women and collect water for the day. She was not accepted by this community she was living in or by the people around her. And the people, they were supposed to protect her, but they weren't. And so we should be questioning, well, why is this? So let's read and find out. We're gonna start at verse seven. It says this, so a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone down into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And it says for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? As did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say that you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man that you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. 
Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has come now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in the truth. So if you're wondering why this woman wasn't able to travel with the other women to go and collect water, it says that she was rejected because she had had five husbands. This would have been a time when divorce was probably looked down upon. Men were the only source of protection for women. And so when this woman had five husbands in her lifetime, we should be asking why. If you caught Jackie's message this past Sunday, you would have had heard that she said this woman was probably either abandoned by her previous husbands because she was barren, meaning that she couldn't have children. This changes how we look at the story, doesn't it? A whole town had rejected her because of this reason. Jesus had to go through Samaria to meet her, to ask her for a drink, and to show her that she is welcomed in his ministry, even if the town around her was rejecting her. Jesus had to tell her that she is loved and welcomed into the kingdom that Jesus proclaimed. We could talk about how Jesus crossed so many cultural boundaries by speaking to not only a woman, but also a Samaritan woman. But I think the most incredible part about this story is that Jesus went out of his way to meet this woman where she was at. He knew her past, he knew the conditions she was living in, and he humbled himself by asking her for a drink. By asking her for a drink, he was also extending the invitation into a relationship with him. He took the time to make her feel seen and known. I wonder what you're asking God for right now. I wonder if you feel brave enough to ask him for a drink from this living water. We should read this story with new eyes and new understanding. Knowing that Jesus went out of his way to meet this woman shows us that he goes out of his way to meet us. We don't have to clean ourselves up, look a certain way, live in a certain lifestyle. Jesus always shows up in the middle of our lives, asking us for a drink. But are you willing to give him one? I'd give you a drink, a warm cup of tea with lemon and mint, a confetti cannon, roses from the garden, my favorite sweatshirt, a bed to lay in, homemade bread or a hand to hold. I'd give you my full attention. I'd give you my phone and say, put your number in. I'd give you the melody line, a standing ovation, a sense of security. I'd give you anything and everything if it made you believe that you were enough.